PowerShell functions are a ubiquitous construct in the PowerShell language. And in this snip, I want to go over the evolution of a function. So we're going to talk about how to build a logging function called write log, which writes text to a blog file. And we're going to go by the very basics all the way down to things called parameter validation, uh, which we have lots of snips for in the library. All right, so to get started, a function is a executable command. So you've ran lots of commandlets, I'm sure, in your day if using PowerShell by anything in PowerShell is a commandlet just about. I mean, get service, get content, get set content, whatever, any of the, those are commandlets. But you can also create custom commandlets. Some people call them commandlets. They're called actually functions. Commandlets are compiled commands that a developer would typically make in C Sharp or something like that. And a function is what me, just a mere mortal, would create, actually an advanced function to get that same kind of functionality. I'm going to create a function called write log. And first off, when I run this, notice that it says it's not recognized there. It doesn't know what this is. There is no write log commandlet or function available to us in our session at all. So we like to create it. To create a function, we can use the function keyword. So there on line 9 through 12, you'll notice that very, very basic function. This is called an advanced function, which will be all of the functions that you'll be creating. And it's called advanced because you see that commandlet binding keyword in there with the param, open paren, close paren in there to represent all of the parameters that we may be providing to it. So to make PowerShell aware of this function, I will just copy that out and I can paste it in here. I'm just copying it into my current session. You can get this in here to a number of different ways into your current session, but uh, for our demonstration purposes, this is going to be the easiest at this time. So now, whenever I run write log again, now notice that I don't get an error message, but absolutely nothing happens. Nothing happens because we don't have any code. PowerShell is executing that write log function, but it's not actually doing anything whatsoever. To actually make your function do something, you need to add some kind of code. It can be one line, it can be a thousand lines. It's much better to keep your function clear and concise and only do one single thing. So I don't recommend a function over something like, I don't know, a couple dozen lines because um, that's when you get into you know best practices and that sort of thing. There on line 24 for the write log function, I've created just a simple string that says, I did something. This is just going to output to the console demonstrate that, I would just run this, and then that overwrites the previous write log definition that I added in there, and then run it again, and now you can see that it says I did something. So it executed the function, and then it ran whatever code was inside of that. So that is a very, very basic example of a function. That's about as basic as you can possibly get. But now, using that as a platform, we can actually build upon that. So let's start adding some parameters in here. Since this is a write log function, I know that I want to add a certain string to a text file. That's not going to be the same thing every time. You know, I don't want to run that write log function over and over and over again, and it just adds a line to the log file that's the exact same thing every time. That's not very useful. So to allow me to pass in different values to this every time it runs, I can add a parameter. In this case, you can see that I have the parameter of message. It's represented by a dollar sign and then the word message. If the variable is placed in the parameter block here, then it allows me to pass the message parameter to it. To demonstrate that, I will overwrite my previous write log. And then now you can see on line 39 that I can run write log and then do a space dash and then the name of that parameter. In this case, it's going to be message. And then I pass a parameter value to it which in this case is going to be, I did something. You see that does the exact same thing. That allows me to pass in values, dynamic values, as the, the function runs so that I can customize and change the behavior of the function. All right, so we can also add, that's just one parameter. We can add as many as we want here. So on this example, I'm creating another one called severity. This function, I want to set the message. I want to be able to record a message and I want to set a severity. It could be one through five, depending on if it's an informational message or if it's a very severe message, maybe I'll add that as a severity of five. 
And then I can just do that by simply adding parameters to the end of messes there. So here in line 43, I'm just separating them with a comma and then setting another parameter here. And then I can simply call that just as I did with message. I just need to keep adding those to the end there. All right, so we are slowly but surely getting our function built out to what's actually functional. <laughs> All right, so next part, specifying parameter types. Parameter types allow us to restrict the kind of value that gets passed to our parameters. All right, in this instance, to show you what this means is, on line 54 in our message parameter, we were passing a string to it. And in the real world, a string would be the right thing because we want to pass just text to it. We don't want to pass a service controller object here. We can force message to always become a specific object type. We can do that by defining the object type in square brackets in front of the parameter. So in this instance here, I'm defining just a random object type of service controller. So I'm saying that I want the message variable to be a service controller object. So let me show you how that works. So let's say before we were able to just pass whatever we wanted to it and it worked. Okay, so let's say that here I'm just passing a Boolean false value to write log. Before that would have worked, but now it says cannot convert value false to the type service controller because it tries to dynamically convert it to a similar object type to know to try to assume what you're going to do. And in this instance, a Boolean type is so different than a service controller type, it couldn't map those uh, somehow and it, it wouldn't work. However, if let's say we have a, an object that's returned from get service, which get service does return a service controller object. We can verify that by piping our service variable here to get member. And now you can see that we do have a service controller object. Now when we pipe this in, then notice that it went through. It executed write log, it passed the message through, and then it returned the message. In this case, it's just a Windows service. That's a good behavior to get into. Try to know what parameter types you need to run there. So that's the next kind of evolution here. All right, continuing on, the next step is we want to use parameter attributes. And how that works is before up here, notice that we didn't have um, anything that said parameter. Like we didn't have the parameter um, keyword here. We just have the object type of service controller and then the message parameter name. So we didn't have anything called parameter. However, down here, notice that we started on line 72 and line 75, we have that parameter keyword we have open paren, close paren, and that allows us to then pass parameter attributes to it. There's a lots of different parameter attributes at the, out there. If you search on text snips for PowerShell and parameter, I know that you'll find a lot of different attributes to show you there. So in this instance, we are able to pass parameter attribute called mandatory. Mandatory is a common parameter attribute, and that forces us to pass the message value to the write log function every time we want it to run. This eliminates the chance of us accidentally forgetting to use the message parameter. And then also we have the ability to set a default value as well. This isn't a parameter attribute, but this is another important fact of default value. So notice on line 76 there, we have severity equals one. That allows us to set a default. So every time write log executes, the value of severity is going to be one every time, unless we overwrite it. We can overwrite that by passing whatever we want to it. So let me show you how that works. I will go ahead and overwrite the previous write log with my new write log. And then now, if we'd run this without anything, notice that it prompts for a message. And let's say, I don't know, server blew up. So it returns server blew up dash severity one because we didn't override it. However, we can prevent that prompt by just setting the message ahead of time here. So let's say message server blew up. And then let's just change the severity to, I don't know, five. Now we're able to customize that, override that default value if we want to. All right, so the final piece of this function evolution is we can use parameter validation. And Josh King has a lot of great snips on parameter validation. So you can just search for parameter validation in text snips here, and you'll find a great, great explanation of every one of these things. In this instance, I'm just gonna be using the validate range parameter attribute. Not much has changed here other than we don't have a mandatory up here. So let's just add this in just for my OCD. And now that you notice that we have a validate range. So underneath that parameter keyword, we can provide various validation attributes. So in this instance, we have validate range. 
validate range allows us to ensure that a value is between one or the other. In this instance, it's between one and five. So it allows for two arguments. So this means that severity can only be one, two, three, four, or five. It allows us to limit the input there, which is a great thing to do. To show you how this works, I will go ahead and overwrite my previous one. And then now let's say that, oh, I want to pass severity eight. Maybe I fat fingered it. Well, now it stops me ahead of time and it says the eight argument is greater than the maximum allowed range of five, which is great. We're able to only ensure that the function is called as we need. And then now if you use five, one, two, three, four, or five, it's going to work great. And like I said, search for parameter attribute, parameter validation, tech snips. There's a lot of them. We have a lot of great information out there to go more detail into the parameter validation. But I think this snip gave you a great overview from the very, very basics of a PowerShell function all the way down to an advanced function using parameter attributes and parameter validation. This is going to be a very good primer for other things as well. So that has been how to build a function in PowerShell.